So Ashley and I are so excited to be doing the pelvic floor challenge with you. We're going to be going over topics every single week. And the first topic we're going to be talking about is just pelvic floor basics, just very basic anatomy and what the pelvic floor does. And so Ashley and I will be talking about this. The pelvic floor is actually three layers. It's made of, of 14 muscles, fascia, nerves, it's, it's incredible how the pelvic floor works, which is also why so many women have pelvic floor issues. It's so intricate, uh, but it's amazing. It, it is the base of our core. And actually, I always tell people that like, you know, when you build a house, you wouldn't build it on an unstable foundation, right? Everyone knows it was gonna crumble. And to me, that's how the pelvic floor is. It's the base of our core. So when we're out there exercising and doing all these things, building muscles, and we're not focusing on that pelvic floor as well, that base. We're building our bodies on the most unstable foundation possible, which is why pelvic floor work is so essential. So I would love to hear from you. Let's talk about the fascial aspects of the pelvic floor and how that plays. And I would love to just hand it over to you and talk a little bit about that. I think, you know, the first thing to just kind of throw out there, because, you know, people are like, well, would this help my vagina or, you know, is what is it made up of? I mean, really, it's it's the same as the rest of our body. It's made up of, you know, muscles and fascia and then anything that penetrates the fascia, which is your lymphatic system, the blood system, the nervous system, right? And then, of course, you have the skin and the other things, but the bulk of it is muscle and fascia, yeah. right? So I think the biggest thing that I want to make sure our viewers know is that there's so much crap out there, honestly, about fascia. And you're hearing so much about how it's, whenever I talk to like the press, for example, they're always like, oh, it's like a casing on the muscle. And I'm like, uh, sort of. Yeah, they don't understand it. <laughs> right. So we really have to think about it um, in terms of each individual and i use straws when i do this visual but every single muscle fiber which they're actually teeny teeny tiny are circled in fascia right so yeah. when all little circles come together that makes a casing but it's also all the little circles that go through the muscle and when we exercise or contract a muscle, the entire thing, like a big, almost like an octopus or something. Yeah. Like that, it, it, it all contracts, all the fascia. You cannot contract a muscle without contracting the fascia. It all returns to normal or dysfunctional wherever we are, and it should have the ability to stretch. That is how the fascia works. Now, in fascia world, you will have, you'll hear about anatomy trains. So what'll happen is your people go and Google this. So I'm trying to help them <laughs> make the <laughs> of what we're talking about. So when we talk about lines of fascia, that is where the casing that we just described, again, it's all individual muscle fibers, but the way that the fascia lays in one continuous piece, um, and the lines are so, so long. Like literally it's the difference between dissecting a body like that old game operation, you know, yeah. where we <laughs> would pluck stuff out. That's the old way. The new way would be like slicing. I just got back from Spain. So I, when we were doing the Haman, I was like, this is how we need to do dissections and like the little slivers, right? Because when we do the slivers that we see that this fascia is, I don't want to be like, we're all connected. We're literally connected. So yeah. there are lines of fascia that go, for instance, from the bottom of the foot up the hamstring crisscross in the back and end like at our brow bone. And when you do the Haman slicing of a human body, you see these giant long lines. So that's yeah. what people come out when they talk about lines of fascia or trains and train stations. That's the beautiful work of Tom Meyer. And then when you hear people talk about doing myofascial release, all that means is myo is muscle, fascia is fascia, and then release is God knows what people are calling release. But um, the myofascial is all that stuff that I described inside the muscle, right? Yeah. Um, so when you, when you start to do your research, just understand that we're all really talking about the same thing. Um, there, you know, fascia world has a little bit of an identity crisis. It's something that sort of got missed. You know, you and I took anatomy and physiology 
me 30 years ago, you 20 years ago, like, where was the fascia? We didn't learn it, you know, no. and it's just now coming out. So yeah. I we're backtracking. People, like, <laughs> I tell kind of people to two things. It's like a Spider-Man suit. Like if you took away everything in your body, but your fascia, we'd look like we have a Spider-Man suit, right? Like, and that's that right. interconnected that people that's talk right. about. And then also, I think it's really important, like the fascial adhesions and trauma and injury, people don't understand. Like if you pull on a wool sweater on the sleeve, you're gonna really mess up the wool on that sleeve, but it actually messes up the entire sweater, which is that fascial whole thing. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And also di dysfunction in one area. So even if it doesn't quote unquote pull, you know, I think the thing that I've been fascinated with is like, we say, oh, this is an adhesion. You know, I have an academy where I train people to do I this. know, it's, it's so amazing. So fun. Anybody out there that's a professional, come come take Fascia Advancement Academy. It's, it's awesome what we're doing. Um, but I love it because we have people from, you know, every type of therapy and psychology coming. So it's like you get all these really cool perspectives. But everybody wants to be like, oh, I feel an adhesion. Right. And we can, it, it feels like a lump. It feels like yes. a heart crusty lump. But what's so amazing and what is fascinating me recently is that we can have micro adhesions that no one can feel, but it's already like a storm is brewing, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm really excited about the way that my tools work and the way we're going to incorporate them. Because, you know, if you're taking the nugget, particularly like the really small nugget, and you're just doing the scribble scrabble technique, remember, we're going to teach you all this. You might be touching on these little tiny micro adhesions that don't feel like an adhesion, don't look like an adhesion. No, no therapist is going to be like, oh my God, you have micro adhesions. But we have to remember with fascia, because it's all one piece, maybe that's just like one stitch of the sweater. Yeah. But it's a problem. It's a right? problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm so excited with the fashion, the way the exercises are done too, they're like restorative. It's therapy to correct like movement patterns, things like that to help retrain your body so you move better to help also with those fascial adhesions. So I'm just so excited. Like I feel like women just need to know that that tightness, like you said, it's it's also fascial. When people say they're like stretching their muscles, it's it's fascia. It's fascial. <laughs> yeah. It's probably actually more fascial, you know. You it is. And, and I think people don't understand that. So I'm so excited for this. And I know, you know, the pelvic floor works, it's, it attaches, you know, you and I know from like sits bone to sits bone, side to side, and right. front to back, here's like a model, pelvic floor. Love Here is our pubic bone at the front and it attaches all the way back to the tailbone and then sits bone to sits bone. And if I hold it up, you'll see like, you know the striations and I do, it's circular fan shaped, it's lateral, it's front to back, and then it's three layers as well. And it lifts like an elevator. So I think also I have a diaphragmatic breathing video mm -hmm. for people to, to I Love. want everyone to watch it. And Love then to that. practice those exercises, because if you're breathing really shallow, your diaphragm is not expanding and neither is the pelvic floor. So that's a really important video because our breathing, well, you know, one of the things I, I just love about, you know, I follow you and I'm familiar with a lot of what you do. So I'm definitely wanting to dive in more, but you know, one of the things that's so incredible uh, uh, that like doctors would tell you is they kind of isolate it to do your Kegels. And I'm yes. like, okay, but Kegels should be part of breathing. Kegels should be part of taking a step. Kegels should be, you know, it's it's about that neuromuscular integration. And the yeah. fact that so many of your exercises are in fascia lines, it's like you, you're doing like a whole next level. Like you're doing long chain fascia movement, plus all of the strengthening and then putting it all together as part of everyday human movement. Yeah. You know, when I work with athletes, I feel like it is the same thing. Like if you go back 20 years with me, I somewhere online, I did this program with an NFL player and we were just talking about all human movement. And I said, okay, every single exercise, it's almost annoying. I'm like, blow abs go. And I defined abs as transverse abs, pelvic floor, and then an intentional motif multifidus firing before they did sports movement. And it's like, if you don't have to be a pro athlete to still need that kinetic chain. And that's exactly yeah. what you're doing, except for you're adding 
fascial lines. It, well, it's I think really too, what's so great is that I teach people to relax. You know, you're think of like that athlete you train when like you think of Michael Jordan, he's not tightening anything. His, everything is turning on exactly how it's supposed to and functioning well throughout the entire movement when he's doing a dunk or anything. And so when people like, oh, let me tighten, no, listen to your body. It's going to naturally contract with certain movements and then relax and lengthen in other movements. And so that's so important to allow and teach your body to be able to like eccentrically and concentrically right. load because they're both critical and that has to do with fascia too, right? You can't have Absolutely. tight fascia and think that your your muscles or are contracted relax. fascia. You know? Yeah, so I think it's just so it's important, good, right? to do that. So that's great. I mean, so with the fascia and pelvic floor, they're just, they're essential together, you know, like the exercises and fascial work, they're so important. So let's talk a little bit or about- do people say, I don't, I don't really do, um, you know, fascial exercises. And I'm like, yeah, you do, you do. You do, <laughs> you, do you just don't know it. Did you, you contract know? your bicep? I'm so sorry, but that was a fascial contraction. Well, and so. that's where with the, the tightening, like the kegels, I'm like, you don't want anything that's only concentric. Like all, if you just did a whole bunch of bicep or curls, you know? Oh my gosh, you're going to be so dysfunctional. So I'm like strong, toned, resilient, elastic. That's what muscles and fascia are supposed to be.